All right, let's just get right into it. Lakers just made a huge trade. Yesterday, the Lakers traded for D'Angelo Russell, Jared Vanderbilt, and Malik Beasley. Timberwolves got Mike Conley, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, and three second round picks. The Lakers sent Russell Westbrook, JTA, Damian Jones, a 2027 first round pick, top four protected to the Jazz. For the Lakers side of this trade, I love this trade. For the Lakers, you get three players that are good fits next to LeBron and AD. Obviously, d is a starting point guard, but Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt can both either start or come off the bench. D'Lo and Beasley are both good three-point shooters with D'Lo shooting 39.1% from deep on seven attempts, while Beasley is almost shooting 36% from deep, shooting 35.9% from deep on 8.6 attempts. D'Lo and Beasley are both good spot-up shooters, but they are not just spot-up shooters. With D'Lo, he can create his own shot off the dribble. And Malik Beasley is also a good movement shooter, so you can have him come off screens or dribble handoffs into a pull-up shot from deep. Now, Jared Vanderbilt isn't a great shooter, from deep but he's capable of knocking down a corner shot from deep if he's open but defensively is where Vanderbilt brings a lot of his impact he gives the Lakers another rim protector he's a versatile defender with him being six foot nine and having a seven foot one wingspan he can guard positions two through four and he can hold his own against some point guards he's just the perfect glue guy that every contending team needs and would love to have for the Jazz side they're definitely gonna buy Russ out I doubt the Jazz keep him teams have already shown interest in Russ like the Clippers the Heat and the Bulls the Jazz get another first round pick and they now have 15 first round picks through 2029 for the Timberwolves Mike Conley is a good fit there yes D'Lo was having the better season but Conley still gives them shooting from deep with him shooting 36.2% on five attempts he still gives them playmaking with him averaging 7.7 assists per game and he's a good pick and roll ball handler he will be able to give Rudy Gobert easy layups dunks and lobs at the rim now, the Knicks traded for Josh Hart. The Knicks traded Cam Reddish, a protected first-round pick in 2023 that turns into four future second-round picks if not conveyed this year. For the Knicks side of this, I like this trade. Josh Hart is the definition of a Tom Thibodeau guy. He gives it his all in the defensive end, willing to do the little things that don't show up on the stat sheet. He is one of the best rebounding guards in the league, and if he can shoot 32 to 34% from deep like he has in the past, he'll be a perfect fit on the Knicks. For the Blazers side, this is not a terrible return. I believe Cam still has potential, but we he, as the NBA community have been saying that for a minute now so it's probably unlikely Cam does reach his potential at this point but it could still happen and the Blazers get a possible first round pick out of this now the Raptors traded for Jakob Pertol the trade package of the Raptors get Jakob Pertol the Spurs get Ken Burch a protected 2024 first round pick and two future second round picks for the Raptors I like this move they desperately needed a center sometimes this season they have been playing Pascal Siakam at the center spot or Christian Coloco and now Jakob perfectly slides and gives them the size and presence they need on the interior. And now the Raptors look more complete. For the Spurs, Kem Birch isn't anything special, but they do get more draft capital that they can add to their collection of picks that they received in the DeJounte Murray trade. Lakers traded Thomas Bryant for Devon Reed and multiple second round picks. For the Lakers side, I understand why they did it. Thomas Bryant is a solid backup center. Offensively, he's solid, but he's terrible defensively. He is not a good rim protector at all. He allows 69.7% shooting at the rim to opposing players per five shot attempts which means he's basically the worst interior defender in the league lakers get devon reed who's probably just thrown in to make the trade work in multiple second round picks for the nuggets they finally get a backup center and thomas bryant can play 18 to 20 minutes for them the Lakers also traded for Mo Bamba. They gave the Magic Pat Bev in a second round pick. I love this trade for the Lakers. You replace Thomas Bryant with him. He gives the Lakers a stretch big with him shooting 39.8% from deep on 2.7 attempts and he's a solid rim protector. And the Magic will most likely buy out Pat Bev. The Bucks traded for Jay Crowder. They gave the Nets Jordan Nuara in five second round picks. For the Bucks side of this, I love this trade. Jay Crowder is a good role player that is a perfect fit for this team. He gives them a decent catch and shoot shooter from deep with the past few seasons with him shooting 34.3%, 38.9%. And 34.8% last season. Defensively, he is versatile and a solid point of attack defender that can guard positions two through four. He is willing to do the dirty work and he's that enforcer type guy that any contending team needs to have. For the Nets side, they traded Jordan Nwara to the Pacers for Gogo Batazde and two second round picks. Jordan gives the Pacers a solid shooter from deep with him shooting 39.2% from deep on 2.7 attempts. And he has the size with him being six foot eight to become a solid 3 and D role player in the future for them and the Nets they get to add more picks to help them build back up their draft capital now we have a three-team trade with the Blazers getting Matisse Feibel the Sixers getting Jalen McDaniels and the Hornets getting multiple second round picks and Sive Mikhailu 
For the Blazers side, this is an okay trade. Fiable gets the more size on the wing. The Sixers, I like this move. Jalen McDaniel to give you the size and the defense of Fiable. But he's a good enough shooter for the defense to have to respect him. And for the Hornets side, they just get to add more picks. The Clippers traded for Bones Highland. I really like this move for the Clippers. Bones will help them improve their point guard play. He gives them someone else that can create their own shot. And they only had to give up two second round picks. For the Nuggets side, I'm surprised they only got back multiple second round picks. So it looks like they really want to get rid of him for some reason. I don't know. The Clippers also traded for Mason Plumlee. They gave the Hornets Reggie Jackson. I like this move for them. Plumlee is a very solid center in my opinion. He's a little bit underrated. Now the Clippers have a very solid center rotation with Zubak and Plumlee. And the Hornets, I don't know why they did this trade. But just another common Hornets L. They'll probably just buy out Reggie Jackson. The Clippers also did a three-team trade where they got Eric Gordon, they gave up Luke Kennard to the Grizzlies, and the Rockets got John Wall and Danny Green. Eric Gordon will be solid for the Clippers, giving them another shot creator off the bench. Luke Kennard gives the Grizzlies a good shooter from deep with him shooting 44.7% from deep on 3.8 attempts. And John Wall will be bought out and Danny Green will probably be bought out as well. Now we have another three-team trade with the Warriors get five second round picks and Kevin Knox, the Hawks get Sadiq Bey, and the Pistons get James Wiseman. The Warriors then were able to use those picks to trade for Gary Payton II, which is an incredible move by them. I have no idea why the Blazers did that trade though. Sadiq Bey gives the Hawks a wing with size that can shoot, and the Pistons get Wiseman hoping he maybe reaches somewhat of his potential. The Pelicans traded for Josh Richardson. They gave the Spurs Devontae Graham and four second round picks. Like this trade for the Pelicans, Josh Richardson gives them a 3 and D wing, and for the Spurs side, they do get more picks, but they do have to eat the Devontae Graham contract. I appreciate you watching the video. If you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, I would appreciate it. Let me know what was your favorite trade from the trade deadline in the comments. And I'll see y'all in the next video. More content on the way.